Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 3 gave us fans what we've been waiting for for a very long time in that Boruto is finally utilizing the intelligence that he's been granted from the beginning of the series up until this point. Hello everybody, it's your boy King of Chaos here to bring you Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter Discussion, bringing up a topic that I think that all of us should be questioning. Why is Boruto learning Sage Mode in the first place? Or better, why has he mastered Sage Mode already? Which to be honest, I believe we're at the point in the story where Boruto has mastered Sage Mode by the time of Boruto Chapter 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 3. If you love Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, if you want more Naruto videos, anime, manga, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section just how hype you are for the next chapter, which should be coming out in a couple days from now. Now, I wanted to point out the, the genius within Kishimoto's writing of having Boruto learning Sage Mode. For those of you who don't remember, Kawaki is Boruto's end goal as in, you know, his final boss. We may see a couple different enemies and, you know, a couple of Tsutsi gods, whether that be Shibai, whether a model finally stops lurking out of the shadows, whether code finally stops getting cucked. But all in all, his goal has been since the time skip to defeat, uh, to defeat Kawaki in a battle of brothers. That way you can prevent any, you know, backlash from the village for Kawaki's actions. Now, in order to do that, Boruto's going to need some specific skills because Kawaki's a hard walking counter in most cases to Boruto's abilities. For those of you who are confused, let me point out a couple things to you. Boruto is a shinobi and Kawaki isn't. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's remember that Karma has a couple different abilities. One, it allows you to get the instinctive GNA makeup and genetic code of previous users and previous um, incarnates. Because of that, you inherit thousands of years of combat experience earlier on. The second thing is it allows the user to reincarnate themselves within a capable vessel in order to prolong their life. This lets them reincarnate, retaining all their memories, abilities, and their consciousness. But the third ability is probably the most popular one that we see the most time. It has the ability to absorb chakra-based ninjutsu. That's going to be a huge deal breaker when it comes to a fight between Boruto and Kawaki, and here's why. Kawaki is a cyborg, well, I mean, a cyborg genetically modified human um, who has ninja tech. He himself isn't using ninjutsu for most of his attacks, even his jutsu that he's got from his dojutsu. Um, none of them are really chakra based. Whereas Boruto inversely, all of his jutsus come from chakra. You know, he has no techniques um, outside of the Jogon, I guess, perhaps. We don't know its powers yet, but he has no techniques that don't revolve around chakra in some capacity, his own internal chakra. Do you remember in the fight with Naruto and Sasuke, where Sasuke was able to use the Rinnegan to absorb part of Naruto's chakra from the Nine Tails? That's a key thing here. It allowed Sasuke to go against Naruto, who again, who was holding back, granted, but it allowed Sasuke to keep up with him in a chakra battle. That should never happen. Naruto organically should out-exhaust out Sasuke um, with his overabundance of chakra. That's how that fight should have went if Naruto's serious, despite what a lot of fans think. Now, if you were to put Boruto up against Kaki, and Boruto's throwing the Rasengans, you know, his lightning palms, whatever techniques and jutsu he's going to use, it would be pointless unless there is a way to prevent it from being absorbed by Kawaki. Otherwise, in a Magic the Gathering term, this will be what we would call a two for one. Hear me out. Boruto uses Chakra to cast the Rasengan. That's one point of effort on his end. Kawaki is then able to get two points advantage by one, putting Naruto on the defense, sorry, putting Boruto on the defensive by absorbing his Chakra from his attack, and then two, gaining that chakra for himself that he can use to power up his attacks, amp up his karma, his physicality, because that's what he primarily uses it for. By adding sage mode, chakra nature into it, you now prevent the ability of Kawaki being able to absorb it. Remember, karma can only absorb non-organic uh, chakra-based attacks. That's why when Naruto was using his you know, sage mode, he uses his Rasengan, um, Jigen wasn't forced to absorb it, he was instead forced to shrink it. This would allow Boruto to flip the script on Kawaki. He's now getting the 2 for one, forcing Kawaki into a defensive position where he's using his chakra to shrink his attacks, preventing him from shrinking other things like his sword or, I don't know, his shoes or something. Now, some of you might be thinking it's a little bit redundant for him to have it in the first place, right? And I know that someone somewhere out there is thinking about the correlation between Kurama and Sage Mode training originally from Naruto Shippuden. If those of you who remembered from Naruto, when Naruto tried to combine the sages on his on his um, body with Mom Pa, it didn't work. He wasn't able to do that because Kurama was pushing him away. Whether or not that's going to be the same case with um, Momoshiki or not, that that's up in the air. We can't really determine whether or not you know it's working the same way. When you seal the Biju inside of you, they're becoming a source of power that you can draw upon. Boruto doesn't draw power from Momoshiki though; he draws it from a Karma. Whereas Momoshiki is more of so ingrained within his soul. Think of them as your roommate and you are living in the same place. Um, and and it, let's say he's helping you move a couch versus you're using your joint. Um, dolly to move something yourself. It's one thing to be borrowing power from someone you are relying upon. It's another thing to be accessing joint power you both have access to. 
A better example would be something like a joint bank account versus individual ones. Plus, you also have to remember, Sage Mode isn't just an amplifier. Sage Mode allows the user to get closer to the nature, energy of the planet and the environment around them. Also, you have to consider this. Those with massive pools of chakra are allowed to essentially double their chakra pool. It doesn't replace your chakra. It adds in the same amount of nature energy. So someone with large amounts of chakra energy, sorry, chakra reserves, such as Boruto, who's Uzumaki, and someone who's the vessel of Momoshiki, that's, that's an amazing amp. You combine that with the sensory abilities, it's a lot. It would explain how he was able to dodge Kawaki's attack without seeing him coming, because he wasn't looking at Kawaki when he originally dodged him in the last chapter. He was looking at Code. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, who's around to teach him Sage Mode? Currently, we know Naruto has access to the Sage areas. I believe Konohamaru has access to at least some of the Toad summonings. And we've seen Kashi and Koji, everyone's favorite uncle, uh, coming in the clutches. We know that he survived his last iteration and altercation with Jigen at the time. So, where is he now in Borto 2 Blue Vortex? Who knows? But it would explain exactly where and why borto has been hiding and how he got access to the Toads that we saw in Borto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 3. But where is Kashi and Koji is going to be another video for another day. Anyways, it's been real. Thank you for watching. It's your boy King of Chaos. If you enjoyed this discussion, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Let me know, do you think Boruto has mastered Sage Mode yet? I'm pretty confident on it at this point, but I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And if you give me any other topics or theories to discuss, who knows? I might do a video on them. Thanks for watching. Take care.